Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny, Queen and Slim, directed by Melina Masuka, starring Daniel Kaluuya and Jodie Turner-Smith. Now, I noticed that a lot of people on YouTube, they're sponsored when they do a lot of reviews on movies, so they really don't go into depth about how to review and what you should take from, how you should perceive movies, what you're viewing, but I'm going to do that. Okay. I am going to hold your hand and walk you through this movie. Okay. I am going to give a re non spoiler review. Okay. About the storyline, the screenplay, the cinematography and the direction. After that, I'll go into a spoiler review, which will allow me to go even deeper into all of those dynamics. Okay. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. So beginning the non-spoiler review. So just to understand the plot, we have two individuals, they're on a date, which isn't going so well, but Slim offers Queen a ride home. And on the ride home, they are getting pulled over what they think is a you know minor traffic stop or, or a violation but instead it is a police officer of course that it has police brutality tality energy and it ends with slim killing the cop in self-defense all right so with that premise we can start to talk about all of the foundations of this story, which all balls up to give me a review for this film, okay? For one, understand that the story itself is from James Fry. That has a lot to do with the lens of how this movie begins and ends. James Fry, if you're not familiar with him, he was the one who wrote the book, uh, Tiny Little Pieces or A Million Little Pieces. And he was the person that really pissed off, okay? Oprah, <laughs> because that book was selected by Oprah only to find out that the story was completely fabricated, okay? It wasn't true. He came on her show and painted a dynamic like it was his experience, like it was something that he actually lived, something he actually knew. But with Oprah's team and people doing research, they later found out that it was fabricated. She then later invites him to the show to defend himself. And he admits the story is fabricated. And of course, with white America, let's be honest, he was forgiven and the book continued to sell. Yes, Oprah was upset, but he was forgiven. He really didn't receive too much backlash. He was hush hush. He kind of stayed with his tail between his legs and we really haven't heard too much from him. But this with that, OK, we have James Fry that takes this story to uh, Alina. OK, is it is it Waith? Takes it to her and says, I have this idea. Um, this is a story I'm going to give to you for you to do. She says, oh, I think it's a great story. She takes that baby in her hands and proceeds to develop the storyline for this movie, okay? So that's the foundation of this movie. Also, we have with cinematography, Tat Radcliffe. If I pronounced his name incorrectly, let me know. He is the cinematographer for this movie. So to help you understand, we have Melina, who is the director, and we have Tat, who is the cinematographer. To help you understand, tell you, it's all gonna come together. Just sit back and ride with me for a second, okay? The director's job is to handle the dynamic and the emotion of actors and how they portray this story, how it bleeds out to the audience. The cinematographer's job is to make sure cinem cinematically that the director's vision is executed. The angles, the color, the cinematographer has to capture that emotion, okay? So the cinematographer and Melina do a good job in working as a team to give us those hues of browns and golds and creams and all of these beautiful colors 
uh, that we see throughout the movie. So the pros. The pros are cinematography, absolutely stunning and amazing. One to give clearly an Oscar nod based on cinematography, okay? And Melina does a good job with the direction of the film. Also, the score of this movie, the music, okay, does a good job with capturing certain emotions and pulling you in and bringing you there and taking you on this ride in this journey of two fugitives fleeing from the situation that we've seen several times before. So the idea is wonderful of pulling you in of two fugitives who are fleeing from this situation because for one, they're black, a white cop is killed. What are we gonna do now? So we have the adrenaline and they have, we have the pull in of this movie. Those are the cons. Excuse me, those are the pros. Here are the cons. The cons are, now when I do a review of the movie, I don't base my review based upon if I like the script or not. How I review a movie is, was the script and idea captured and executed well, whether I like it, the, the idea or not. That is how everyone on YouTube should review a movie. That's just like YouTube videos. You shouldn't thumbs down the video if you disagree with me. You're really supposed to thumb up or thumb down if you like the quality, if you like how the review was approached, etc. But that's just my opinion. So I'm not basing my review based upon if I like the ending or if I like the script. The con is we walk in with an idea and a motive and the ball was dropped on the premises of what I thought I was gonna watch. Let me say that again. You're pulling me in under an assumption of we are watching an, a, a dynamic and a story of what I think to be this and it drops the ball on that. Wonderful movie, I would rate it seven out of 10 and that seven Okay, that seven, <laughs> cinematography, score, and idea. It loses those other three points because I honestly feel that the idea was not executed well, regardless of the ending, regardless of what I thought, of what I think. Okay, and I'll go more into depth of the spoiler review at the end. If you have not seen this movie yet, after you see the movie, please come back and look at the spoiler review towards the end of the video. Now, here's something that I want you to get. The reason why I brought off, brought up James Fry, the reason why I brought up Tad Radcliffe, this is where they, they dropped the ball. We have this white idea, right? that the, I feel that they have these black faces, these black people in the forefront to pull in the black dollars. We have yet to see James Fry do any interviews, any publicity about this movie at all. It being such a sensitive topic and such an in-depth, thing that America could be talking about. I feel the ball was dropped on what the message should have been for this film. So with that, that is why I give it a seven out of 10. Seven for score, cinematography, and direction. What takes away from that and it not being 10 out of 10 and losing those three points is not executing the idea well and I'll explain why. When I said it, you're gonna be like, I never thought of that. But I do think that they dropped the ball. A lot of scenes uh, were unnecessary in the movie. Scenes that were unnecessary and created confusion and huh? Instead of taking that out and adding more content where that should have been. Uh, because what I, what I notice about this is that if you take out all 
of the content, meaning the verbiage of the script, and you take that out, there's not a lot of verbal content. It would look like a long video, a long music video. Taking out the words. There should have been more monologue, script, verbal context. Okay? Now, spoiler alert. Oh, before I get into that. So, be mindful of that. It's a great movie, but open your third eye and understanding that this idea has white idea, white foundation, right? Holly Weird does that Jedi mind trick in saying we're gonna have these black people on the front forefront. Keep in mind, this is the premiere of Melina's directorial debut, okay? She's amazing, she's done awesome cinematography with Insecure and some other things. But I honestly believe Hollywood, believe that Hollywood said, we need black faces to pull in these black dollars. And we know that the audience is gonna go in thinking they're watching something, this, this, this platform. And wow, we are seeing a movie that's based on police brutality and it looks uplifting and it looks like justice and hope is somewhere in that movie. That's what pulled you in. If I'm lying, tell me in the comments. That's what pulled you in to see it if you saw it. Okay? Now, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I am going into the spoiler review of this movie. Do I recommend that you go see it? Yes, it's not a bad movie. It's a very good movie, but script wise, like I said, the idea and the dynamic led me on this roller coaster. I'm up here and it went backwards and we started at the beginning. Okay. Not a, not a bad movie. Go see it. It's a very well written movie, but please be mindful and open your third eye of Hollywood. Holly weird pulling you in and making you forget the true plot, which is police brutality. Now, on to the spoiler review. Spoiler review, you got a few seconds before I go into the spoiler review. Now, here's the spoiler review, and I'll give you a cliff notes of the entire movie. They do the shot, based on self-defense and they take off. So they, it's this series of a journey, this Bonnie and Clyde-esque escape of them getting away from this crime scene, okay? And knowing the energy, knowing the feeling of America, you have in your mind, no justice will be served. Uh, policemen have gotten away with murder um, and not been convicted. So it's this energy of, what will happen with this couple? Will they be caught? Will they not be caught? Throughout the movie, they are assisted from being hidden, right? Being caught and saying, hey, what you did, it was self-defense. You know, you're a fugitive, but you're welcomed here. I won't snitch on you. Have yourself a drink. Do this, do that, right? guiding them on this journey to keep them safe, not being aware of what turn or what will come next of will they be caught? The adrenaline rush of that and having that hope throughout the movie of will they get away, okay? Um, there are scenes in the movie where we have people, where we have someone protesting, a young black protester who is with the side of Queen and Slim saying it's it's self-defense and not liking the cops. And we have a black cop that says, hey son, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to protect you, okay? I don't want you to be hurt. And out of anger, out of frustration, we can assume that that is the emotion of the young teen. He shoots the black cop. 
And that's that huh scene of the movie. Okay, why? Why? You gotta, and he, he just had to be a black cop. And he just had to be a black. Eh? James Fry. James Fry. Through white eyes. Please understand, please understand him not being racist. But come on. Come on. Open that third eye. Okay? So what it does say, of course, you have many movements and you have many things that happen. And I think with that scene, what could have been trying to, tried to be communicated is you have movements and you have things that happen within movements that aren't for the energy of what it means. So I get that. I get that. But why is that entered into the plot? Forgetting, it makes the audience forget who the true villain is. It makes you forget that the villain is the white cop. And it shifts this dynamic of some being, somebody being black once again as a villain and someone creating crime. Come on now, open your third eye, <laughs> okay? So we keep going with this dynamic, beautiful scenes of them escaping, sharing moments of we don't know when we're, if, if we're going to live or die. Let's have these intimate moments, beautiful shots of them dancing, enjoying any little bit of life that may still exist because we don't know the final outcome. Now, the pivot turn of this movie is Queen and Slim, they go to a household where we have a white wife and we have a black husband and it gives you the energy like this white woman is gonna snitch because she does express that I don't like this I don't think we should be helping them and the husband is like we should we should you know and the wife is against that so you have this gut feeling of this white woman she doesn't you know agree with this she's gonna snitch on them oh my god but they allow them to hide in their house as the police get closer into tracking them down okay there also gets to a point to where at the same same household, they have a vehicle in which they need to try to escape. And when they're on the verge of trying to escape, we have a cop who opens the garage, which you see in the trailer, and he sees them, but he lets them go, right? So he tells the other white cop, it was just a deer, you're right, it was an animal, it wasn't anybody, so I let them free, I let them go, okay? As they are getting closer and closer to try to escape, they, their, their idea is that they need to get on a plane to get to Cuba, right? They get closer and closer to that area, and I think it was Miami, and they have a black guy, you know, he got the gold, you know, the fronts on, he's just like, what y'all doing way out here, you know? And he gives this energy, he gives them that, that comfort in saying, we're gonna get you on a plane, you know, but it's going to take a day. And they're like, well, we can't wait a day. Like, we can't do that. Like, we need to escape now. So you're on the edge of your think seat thinking, oh, yes, 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 yes. So quick, come on. Yes, yes, maybe you could have a chance of escaping. OK, they get they, they get to 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 not to the knowledge of knowing that they need to be in this particular place and in order to get on this plane to leave. So they're very close uh, with the last few scenes of the movie and getting on this plane, they're closer and closer to the plane, and all of a sudden, pow, and you hear a gunshot, and Queen is shot, so she doesn't make it. And then we have Slim that picks her up, and we hear a series of gunshots, letting us know that they were killed, they didn't make it. And throughout this, this film, Queen, has a very dominant um, existence of the movie. She In the movie, she's a lawyer. You know, Slim is pretty laid back and kind of like, eh, with, a situa with situations. And she's very forefront in saying, we should do this, we should do that. So she's very forceful. Uh, again, James Fry, open your third eye of this black woman being this energy and being very snippy with the cop that pulled them over, right? Come on now. <laughs> Through white eyes, okay? I just want you to be mindful that 
what this movie does, it you when you watch this movie, it honestly, when you see this movie, you forgot about the white cop, didn't you? You forgot about who the freaking movie was about in the first place. This this white guy with police brutality roughing up some black folks, okay, that got killed in self defense, where they they almost died. Queen and Slim. You forgot about him? Mm -hmm. Oh, but you remember the black teen who kills the black cop, okay? Oh, okay, so I left something out. So the end, when that happens and, and Queen and Slim have been killed and the police take them down, we hear a voiceover narrative that talks about, well, how much was the bounty if we turned in Queen and Slim? And as a viewer, you're thinking, it was that white lady. It was that white lady at the house. I know she turned them in, but instead, the of the movie is the black guy with the gold fronts. He's in the car and we hear the narrative of what was the bounty for turning in Queen and Slim to the cop, cops. And we hear that it was $250,000. So we see the guy that has the gold fronts in the car counting a whole lot of money in the car. Okay. I see you, Hollywood. I see what you did. Jedi mind trick. Now, I love the movie. It was a great movie. Okay? And I have to base it up on the script. But it wasn't executed well. It was a wonderful idea that pulled in black people to see this movie. Okay? And it dropped the ball. So let me tell you how they played y'all and sucking y'all into this movie and getting at them dollars, them black dollars. You forgot about the white cop. You forgot about his ass. Excuse me, I ain't mean to cuss. You forget about him, but what you do remember is the betrayal of a black man turning in these two black people. You forget, you, you, you remember that because there was emotion with that. You remember the black teen killing the black cop. It's giving me villain-esque. Instead of, this has nothing to do with my review of 7 out of 10. But me as the viewer, you had this platform, Lena and Melina, uh, to tell a story. You have the opportunity to make this something fire. And I know Hollywood said to them as she wrote that screenplay, well, James wants this as the ending. This is his story. Instead of could there have been them in court? Could it have been it going more into depth of let's talk about the what if of black people defending themselves when it comes to police brutality. Because let me tell you something with your third eye open, what that would have done. That would have kicked up the dust of, we really should talk about, hmm, Oh no, we can't let the message out that black people might defend themselves and kill cops. That would scare white people. And crazy, power hum hungry, nar narcissistic, <laughs> narcissistic, I can't talk. Narcissist cops. We wouldn't want to send out that message. No. Mm-mm. That is the message that I got from this film with my third eye open. The villains is the, the black teen and the black traitor at the end. Ask yourself, ask yourself why James Fry has not done any publicity for this movie and it's his story, it's his idea. Please understand that Lena is the script writer, meaning she does the screenplay, meaning 
I want to make sure that this idea of James Fry is told in the way that he wants it to be told. Let's have these black faces go out and give all of these energy, give, give, give all of this energy to hype people up. And even Lena said in one interview, well, you know, Queen, you know, and you got to decide, you know, in these movies with police brutality, you know, is, 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 is she going to be, is Queen going to be Malcolm X or she, is she going to be MLK? And I really wanted people to see that she's like, you know, Malcolm X and Slim is more like MLK and closer to the end they switch. Okay. All right. Now I understand it's playing the game. It is giving more of us a story and a dynamic and seeing our beautiful faces and the lighting and starting conversation like we're doing now. But with your third eye open, I just want you to be conscious of what you're looking at. That's all I want you to take out of it. It's a wonderful movie. Go see it. It is a, well, I'm giving the spoiler. Um, it's a wonderful movie. I wouldn't say, oh, no, I'm going to say that. If you, if somebody hadn't have seen it, I would say, go see it. It's great. It's a good movie. But please keep your eyes open in how black issues and black sensitive topics are flipped to protect white feelings. Please understand that. Because if we threw that out, if we threw out that dynamic and we said, no, let's make this a little bit more realistic here. Now, let me show you that I'm right. If that was the true essence of the movie and what's realistic is them shooting down some people, some, some black people that have killed a cop, that's reality. But what could have been taken out people is the black teen shooting the cop and the black guy turning them in at the end on period. Those things could have been taken out. What it does with a lot of movies, especially that movie Harriet, Lord Jesus, let me do a review on that. But if you've seen Harriet, Harriet does the same thing. Let's not tell this true story because we don't want to hurt any white feelings, but we need those black dollars. Please be conscious of what you look at and the message, the true message that is being portrayed and told. Because when you leave the movie, you feel sad as, you feel sad as F-U-C-K. You feel sad. You go in with this hope and then you come out like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> thought you was gonna get some hope huh black people disappointed i'm disappointed in that part but that doesn't that, that that's not weighing on my review because if that way if that was the true way i review movies okay i would put cinematography way down here and script up here i view everything on an even platform whether i liked it or not please let me know what you think uh, but, but please be aware of where this story came from and whose story that it is and why storytelling and why ideas and who you are has a very large dynamic of the story. Perfect example. I'm glad I remembered this before I stopped. Jordan Peele with the movie Get Out. Okay. When he did that movie, he had that ending that we saw in the movie was not the original in ending. And I will put that link down below so you can look at that Jordan Peele interview. There are, uh, on YouTube, you can view the alternate ending of Get Out. Now the alternate ending, the original ending of Get Out. So with movies, they do test screens. They have audiences that look at movies. They sign a consent form that they're not gonna say anything. And they want to see, they do service on audience reaction with movies, okay? I've been to a few of these myself and you, you sign a consent form they get all your information honey and if they find anything about you saying thing about that movie you will get sued okay but what happens is that the original ending of get out um he kills the family of course and he's arrested nobody believes his story and he gets life in prison and the audience did was like oh hell no and Jordan said that the audience was so disappointed and depressed and messed up <laughs> that he said, nah, 
We gonna change that. We gonna change this ending. We're gonna make it some type of a victory because reality is that every dang on day. I can, I can look at that on the news. What I wanna come and spend my money for and see what I just saw on TV. No, give me a, give me a fairy tale ending, okay? Please, can we, can we get a fairy tale ending for once? <laughs> and Jordan said that he understood that, and he felt that finally that was a movie that gave us a non-realistic how it should be ending, because the black story doesn't get that skip into the sunset ending with a lot of movies, okay? So he felt that for once, he wanted to have a victorious ending. And if you've seen, when you saw the movie Get Out and then you see Lil Rel at the end, he was like, I told you I am mother mm -mm Black people was like, <laughs> yay! <laughs> Finally! Can I see a movie, P -p -p police, about that? Regardless how you feel about Quentin Tarantino, that was what he wanted to do with Django, whether you like the movie or not. He wanted a slave hero movie for once. Okay? Let me know what you think. If you agree, if you disagree, please open your mind to what Holly, Holly Weird feeds you. I'm very proud of Lena. I'm very proud of Melinda and showing their beautiful black faces in having those roles with a movie because it was a box office hit. Don't get me wrong about that. These beautiful black people, these beautiful actors, these bi trust me, I'm not saying the negative on that, right? All I'm saying is that when you go to the movies, open your third eye. Open your third eye for your girl, Bunny. Can you do that for me? Can you promise that you'll do that for me? And really look at what you looking at. Like now I say, watch what you watching. Can you watch what you watching for me? <laughs> Let me know what you think. Subscribe to your girl, okay? Spread the word about this channel. And I don't know if you noticed, I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. Comment, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. And watch what you watching, boy. <laughs>